I change my my resume to how you guys say, and then I'm just getting I'm I'm just booked up for the month. Once I, I um landed at Salesforce, it was the best it was the best place for me um in regards to where I am in my in my life at this point. If you're looking to stand out, do something that everyone is is uncomfortable to do. It was easy peasy at that point once I actually just you know went in the direction you guys were leading me to. Down. Hey, everybody. Really excited to speak with Destin this week, who recently broke into Salesforce. I'm sure many, if not all of you, have heard of that company before. Really excited to share your experience, Destin. And I'm sure we'll get into the ins and outs of what the interview process was like. Maybe for everyone watching, just kind of set the stage for where you were before breaking into tech sales, and we'll start to take it from there. Yeah. So um, I was in the financial services field, uh, specifically uh, wealth management, um, dealing with company equity. Um, so if you were to sell your uh, employee share purchase plan, you would get me on the line um, and I'll help you sell those. Um, at that ro- In that role, I would then try and upsell you or try to get you to book an appointment or a consultation with a financial advisor. Um, at that point, you know, I was getting a base pay uh, with no commission, you know, thought that there could be more out there for me. So went ahead, um, was exposed to tech sales prior to getting that job. Um, I think I was in, I interviewed with a company called Launch Darkly. Uh, went four rounds uh, and didn't get it because they felt like, hey, you know, um, we're, mo- we're we're new to Atlanta, uh, where I'm based out of, and you know, with your experience, we don't feel like we can get you ramped up. So I did three years at um, in financial services, uh, and now now I'm landing here at Salesforce. So super excited about that. Yeah, that's awesome, and I, I'd be curious too. Maybe I know you mentioned the Launch Darkly experience. But leading up to this transition into a direct tech sales role, what did you kind of try on your own and what ultimately led you to invest in training? Um, so I, I interviewed a few times just off of, you know, the strength of, hey, you know, I have this experience, uh, but couldn't really articulate myself in a, in a, in a way that I felt um, that managers wanted to hear um, or lent itself to the role. Uh, so, you know, was looking for some outside help in regards to, you know, just getting myself prepared for those interviews and landing those interviews, because quite frankly, at the job market at that time, wasn't hearing a lot back. And when I did, I felt like I bombed, <laughs> to be honest with you. So, you know, saw your um, your YouTube channel. Uh, I think it was the um, Tech Sales is Dying or uh, one of those, um, you know, it, it hooked me in. You know, I watched it and I was like, oh, man, I, I think these guys know what they're doing. Uh, took a look at what the offer was. I was like, okay, you know what? You know, you had a bad week at work. You don't want to really be there. These guys are offering so much value. Like, I mean, you know, it, the money's in the bank account. Just go ahead and buy it. Like, so went ahead, uh, took took the leap of faith um, and enrolled. I, I In two days, I probably was done with the, with the course in regards to just getting through the content. Uh, but I'll say this. Um, in each phase of the course, I found tremendous value. I felt like it was very uh, from the beginning with the set with the resume builder, um, tailored my resume to to how you guys described in the course, interviews, interviews, interviews. Like I, it was almost like uh, instant gratification in regards to seeing the the like the difference, you know, from being in a market where I'm like, oh man, I'm. I'm mad about ghost job postings to where, oh, whoa, I actually, I'm actually getting, you know, responses. Okay, I have two interviews this week. Whoa, I, I didn't plan, you know, three interviews this week. I, I didn't plan for this. But, you know, off of that alone, I was like, okay, I, I'm going to listen to these guys. These guys know what they're talking about, you know. Uh, so, of course, you're moving forward into the course as it's structured. Uh, you know, it's, it begins with, the you know, the resume builder and just getting your mindset right. Uh, move forward to, hey, now you got the interview. You know, this is what this was um, what you you need to prepare for. I mean, practicing, you know, how you guys described how to practice prior to interviews, leading into the interviews and how you how you set the structure, you know, applying for the jobs to where you kind of ramping yourself up in regards to really getting into like a, a flow state in regards to to, you know, interviews at a certain point to where, you know, you're 
the higher hitting jobs that you really want, you're kind of like, okay, I interviewed with a with a couple, you know, a couple spots that I'm like, I, I'm I'm okay with, you know, not getting that one and getting my interview um, skills up. And so by the time I interviewed with Salesforce, I mean, it was it was a smooth process. It was like so smooth um, from there. So get, shout out to that was the most value I got was that was the prep um, the interview preparation and the resume builder couldn't work double them worth triple the money. <laughs> hey, we appreciate you hyping us up, man. And you obviously, I mean, you <laughs> you put in like the amount of work that you put in is is uh, is pretty crazy. So kudos to you um, and all these like interview processes with some of the best companies in the world is is pretty unreal too. Um, as you're going through these, like, you know, I would be curious to pick your brain. Obviously you don't have to overshare about like all the different processes, how they worked out, but were there like particular ones that were extra challenging Were like specific areas where you felt like, Oh snap, like this was really hard for me. I mean, you obviously <laughs> you, like you broke in so quickly, you crushed it so quickly, but you know, I think I think what's really admirable here is like your ability to like really quickly adapt, really quickly just you know situate yourself into like whatever process that you were you were going through. But were there particular ones that stumbled you that you had to like change things up, or you learned a little bit more? Yeah, I'll throw it over to you. Yeah, so I mean, the way you guys structured the course in regards to practicing and getting your answers prepared for the interviews, I mean, the, like. For instance, not even just in the course, but the YouTube video in regards to the 25 questions that you can get in, in, in an interview and what you guys put in the course in regards to how to practice um, by yourself in regards to these interviews, that kind of prepared me to where if I hear this interview, I was on autopilot at a certain point, you know, to where I would say just getting the reps in in regards to you know, practicing that you guys showed how to practice for an interview. I didn't really run into that. You know, um, I felt like I just, you know, put in the, the, the required time and I, it was easy peasy at that point. Once I actually just, you know, went in the direction you guys were leading me down. down so. Nice. Nice. I love it, man. Was there like, uh, obviously you mentioned, you mentioned a resume section, you mentioned, um, like the the outreach um was there a particular section that you felt like was the most valuable by far or like like you know we, we really appreciate like breaking it down all those different things but was there like one area where you felt like oh snap like this really like changed the game for me or this this was when i started seeing a bunch of results it sounds like everything came pretty quick but i don't know if there's like one area where you really felt like things started to, to avalanche in a way yeah it, it it had to be the resume it had to be the resume builder and i think that it just because it it was almost like starting to fight with your best punch. You know, it was like everything was down. You know, it was like, okay, these guys got it. Because I'm seeing an instant, you know, two weeks before that, I put in how I know how many in, um, applications I put in and how many responses I got back. I changed my, my resume to how you guys say. And then I'm just getting, I'm, I'm just booked up for the month, you know? And at that point, you're like, all right. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, you know, at that point, it's almost like, you know, put a quarter in the slot machine and, you you know, and you get what you what you asked for. So that's why I'm like that. That set the tone for the rest of the course. It That had to be the most value, even though I would say that the other uh, sections in the course were valuable. And I can see someone saying, yeah, I got I gained the most value from this here. But I mean, it was just so staggering um the difference you know that's why i would have to hands it down yeah it's awesome man and credit to you for for acting on it so quick and also i love that you know you're taking advantage of every interview opportunity as well i'm sure that gave you a lot of leverage and comfort in these final rounds when you know worst case scenario you've got options I, i'd love to maybe take a, just a quick step back to and appreciate all the feedback on the course when you you know you mentioned you found us through that youtube video and all of these different things were you looking at any other potential courses i'm just curious like if you evaluated any others and what made you ultimately pull the trigger on higher levels actually i wasn't i really was just maybe thinking about tech sales and i was kind of like let me see if someone you know let me see if this is a good career pathway to go down, you know, before making a change or should I stay in financial services and go somewhere else? 
And then I seen a title that says, is tech sales dying? I'm like, oh, is it dying before I get into that career field? And then you, and then, you know, it switches and I'm like, okay, this is what I want to do. So when I, I, I had the, you know, the bug maybe, or it was the, the seed was planted, but then when I saw the video, I was like, let me go with these guys. You know, I, I, I just, I had a feeling. So I just went with you guys once I saw that video and I was, and I, here I am two months later. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, and that's funny. That was actually my next question too, is what was kind of that time frame from joining higher levels to getting the, the final offer? It sounds like it was two months and how, how many interviews and just at a high level, like what was that timeline and everything that happened in between? Yeah. So, um, I, I interviewed about eight companies in a two month span. So again, like I was saying, it was, I, I, I said, I averaged about two, two and a half, uh, interviews a week. Uh, from the week I entered the course, um, and to be honest, the, the, the process with Salesforce was about a month. So it, I mean, it was almost like <laughs> a whirlwind to be honest with you in regards to the whole process. Um, I, I interviewed with companies such as, you know, small, um, startups to, I interviewed with the Databricks and, and Snowflake. Um, and of course, uh, now Salesforce. Um, so, I mean, I got a, I got a plethora of experience, uh, in regards to, you know, just interviewing with different type of companies. Uh, but you know, the process was all the same. Uh, I felt comfortable. I, I think I was most nervous for the first one that I landed, uh, because I didn't have the reps in to, you know, feel comfortable with different questions that I couldn't, couldn't, uh, hear. Uh, but at that, at a certain point, it was almost like, all right, cool. Uh, let's just see if, um, what they're offering. I got, you know, I started getting real picky in regards to, you know, how you guys are like, you know, look at, look at these different type of metrics. You might want to, you might value this more than that. At that point, when I was getting real confident in regards to getting, hearing back from different companies, I started really valuing that. So at once I, I um, landed at Salesforce, it was the best, it was the best place for me, um, in regards to where I am in my, in my life at this point. Nice. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Salesforce is Salesforce. I don't know if there is a, uh, a more prominent brand in tech sales. It's kind of like the, you know, I mean, their whole logo is like trailblazers. That's exactly what it is. So, uh, no, that's awesome, man. And this, I actually want to stay on this topic for just a quick second, because this is something that we hear a lot from students is like, what is the difference between breaking into a company of a tier like Salesforce versus like going for smaller startups? You mentioned that the process was very similar. What, was there anything different? And maybe this is like, you know, affirmation to folks out there that are like too scared to apply for some of these companies. They start with like lower tier companies. And it's funny because, you know, the students that have broken into like the best logos historically inside of higher levels are all folks with like very little experience. Obviously like you had some pretty good pedi pedigree, but people think that you have to like come from Google or that you you have to come from like some crazy company to break into to Salesforce. Maybe mm -hmm. talk about experience a little bit more like, were there any differences? Was it really all the same? Yeah, I'll, I'll throw it over to you. I will say the only difference that I noticed uh, was getting to the manager um, interview. I had to go through more uh, recruiters in regards to just vetting. You know, they it, it, they were like ten to fifteen minute interviews. They were you're they're just asking you the same question. Tell me about yourself. You know, and it's almost like. You just got to convince them that you that you're that you're hungry. At, at that point, it, that's what the recruiter is looking for. And in returns, in terms of the small startups, I just more of the reach. The outreach was actual BDR managers instead of they didn't maybe have a recruiter or anything. But I felt like that was really the only difference, to be honest with you. So if you're interviewing well with a with a small startup BDR, you're going to interview well with an enterprise BDR, uh, BDR manager as well. Like uh, the managers, they're, they're all looking for the same thing. You know, they're looking for someone that's hungry and that's wants it, you know, and to be honest, each one said, you know, money can be your motivation, you know, as long as, you, as long as the drive is there, you know, the money's going to come. So, Hey, that's great for us. You know, this in sales, you know, we're, driving revenue. <laughs> so yeah, we want somebody that likes money. <laughs> so I, I feel like as long as you got that drive, your BDR managers will like you. 
<laughs> no, this is this has been awesome, and uh, yeah, c- congrats. I, I love to see that. And again, that that's one of the things that we always try to encourage is actually taking action. Like for you to have that perspective, you clearly actually did the work, did the outreach to different companies to actually know that. I think I just see so many people that get caught in their head. They want to watch another module. They want to prep. They want to keep preparing. And I, I love to see how much you got after it. This conversation has been probably one of the most dense ones we've ever had. So thank you for the time. I'm curious, you know, on that note, if there's anything else, just looking back, someone on the outside looking in, trying to break into tech sales, is there any other advice or things that maybe you didn't quite think of that you would give to, to someone that's looking to ultimately make that move themselves? Yeah, um, if you're looking to stand out, do something that everyone is is uncomfortable to do. Um, you guys interviewed someone who landed at Ripplin. I apologize, I don't, I didn't remember his name, but he sent the BDR manager that he was going to interview with his prospecting outline, like it was four pages. I did the exact same thing, and the manager got the in. He thanked me as soon as he got on the call. He said, "Hey, I got your um your email, and I appreciate you." He said, "I it would be things that I would change up, but the fact that you sent that and you went out on a ledge." You'll be surprised. No one that we interviewed did anything like that. And he didn't even know, like, he was like, what, what drove you to do that? And I was just like, yeah, I just wanted to show you, you know, the hunger that I have, you know, that and how, you know, how much I want it. And at that point, at that point, it was, I just had to pass the vibe check, essentially, and make sure that I was a culture fit. You know, it was all the questions that I prepared for were out of the window. It was more like, hey, are you a culture fit? What do you... You know, at that point, it was easy peasy. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I love to see it. And yeah, I, I think just another example of ways that you can still be doing the right things, but go a little bit above and beyond in the right way. That's that's also, you know, there is a line of like too much, but I think you struck that perfectly and like really showed your hunger in the right way. And yeah, this is an awesome conversation. So many great points. I'll, uh, I, I don't know if Chris has any famous last words, but uh, yeah, I really appreciate the time, Dustin, and obviously really excited to see where it takes you. So. Yeah, this is awesome, man. I mean, Destin, just, uh, you know, we're very impressed and, you know, we appreciate that you chose us and it's been a pleasure having you. I think that you're a killer, you know, you would have, you would have found a way, but, you know, we're super happy that we enabled you and we're super happy that we sort of shortcut your path to success. And I mean, to Eric's point as well, I mean, you're, you're going to absolutely crush it at Salesforce. I don't, you're not just the person that breaks into Salesforce, you're the type of person who's going to become a top performer. So I appreciate the time. Um, we're going to drop you know, Destin's LinkedIn down below. Destin, if you're super busy, it's all good. No worries. But if anybody wants to pick his brain or, you know, see what his things are, uh, feel free to be shot to him. But Destin, we appreciate you and uh, we're stoked to see you crush him, man. All right. Thank you, guys.